Psalms 93. The Lord reigneth. Hey, look around. You think he's in heaven. He's on his throne. Satan has to go up to him and get permission. God is on the throne. God is in control. We are in a we are in an era right now where God and Satan are in a battle. God has given man a free will. You can serve God or you can serve Satan. A time after the rapture of the church, whenever that happens, we don't know. God is going to give man what he wants. He's going to give Satan rulership of this world for seven years. And one of those things that shows up in the tribulation period is, guess what? Man will have an opportunity not to die. And the Bible says they're going to want to die. So I guess in some ways death is a blessing, especially if you're a Christian, more so if you're a Christian. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. So you just imagine what God is when we see him. When we see the Lord Jesus Christ seated upon the throne of his father. Because that's what we're going to see first. We're not going to see Jesus Christ sit on David's throne. No, that comes seven years after we're raptured. Majesty, honor, and glory. The Lord is clothed with strength. Think about what, what God has for strength. He, he can do all things. He is all things. Wherewith he has girded himself with majesty and strength. The world also esta world established that it cannot be moved. Run back to 9610, which we'll be doing in a couple days, Lord willing. Imagine if, if scientists and man wanted, well, what we're going to do is we're going to move the earth. And, no. You know, if... if, if this big uh, uh, asteroid come, it'll hit us and move the earth. No. Nope. It says that cannot be moved. But yet the, the world, the earth does move. The earth moves. There's a difference between the earth and the world. The earth is this big ball of the planet, earth, that goes around and it's in its orbit. The world cannot be moved. It changes. People die. People are born. We're going to be here until the Lord calls us all out. Just before he wipes the entire earth out with fire. Thy throne is established of old. Yeah. Before Genesis 1.1. You know why it says old? Because before Genesis 1-1, there was no time. There was eternity. The only way you could describe eternity past is old. There's no years, months, minutes, or whatever of time. You can't say in what year God's throne established. You, because no time old establishes the fact. When did God create the angels? When it was in the old well, when did God make Lucifer when it was old? When did God make man the seventh day? Ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. So there is a principal time that when time started, that time started when he made the moon and the sun. And he said these are for seasons. That's when the clock ticked. There was no clock before the sun and moon. I think that's the third day, I believe it is. You can't really say there was a first and second day because the sun and moon. But God started the clock two days before he made the sun and the moon. And that's when the clock started ticking. But we used the sun and the moon to start our clock. So we're two days off. And then there's coming a time just before the, the great white throne judgment 
in Revelation that eternity starts and time stops. You better thank God that there's no time at the great white throne judgment when every person will be judged as not in the church age. Saved. Anybody who's not born again, who, who is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior from Pentecost to the rapture, will be at the great white throne judgment. You say saved people? Yes. So if their names are not written in the book, if their names are written in the book, there's two clauses there. When the books are open, your name's in the book, you're not going to the lake of fire. Thou art for, from everlasting. Another description of what time, if you can say time, in the millennium. I mean, in eternity. That's a beautiful song that we, that we sing, Amazing Grace, but when we've been there 10,000 years, that's a lie. We're not going to be there 10,000 years. There are no years. The only years we will have in heaven is the seven years of tribulation period, then the thousand years of the millennial reign, and then that's it. Time ends. You'll never go old. You'll never have a birthday. How can you have a birthday when there's no days? The floods have lifted up, O oh Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. God drowned the earth out with the floods, and so it's a water. The Bible speaks as the universe as as a water ocean type thing, a sea. And Leviathan's in there. Creation gives God the glory throughout the Bible. Only man is the one that rejects. Only man is the one that rebels. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. So when you went to the waterfalls that we did in, in Norwich, or you go to the mighty, which I've never been to, Niagara Falls, or there's any, any other falls that are even greater than Niagara Falls. God is greater than that noise. The Bible speaks of him having a voice of thunder. Mighty waters can destroy. God can destroy. Mighty waters can be a productive thing. And God is a productive. Listen, they, they've got a power plant there at the Niagara Falls that that collects, in, however they collect it, it makes electricity. Yea, they are mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thy house, O Lord, forever. God's house is built on his holiness. God is holy. Holy means without sin. His, tel his testimonies are sure. That means they are right. They are honored. They are never lied about. God is the God of all. And then when the great white throne judgment is done. The last man. If his name is in the book. And gets called to, to the proper side of, of new heavens or the new earth. And the last man whose name is not in the book is cast in the lake of fire. The Bible says new Jerusalem will come down and God and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, will be the glory thereof. We won't have the need of a sun or a moon to light the place for God will be on his throne. Those gates will be opened. They will never be shut as the Jews and the Gentiles in the outer space, the new heavens, and I mean, yeah, new heavens and the new earth will be able to come in. They'll be able to partake of the water of life, the, the trees of life. Why would you need the trees of life? Because there's a particular saving thing that goes on in eternity. As they come up before God, as they come come up before the Lord Jesus Christ and worship in eternity. 
but only we of the of the church age who has that particular blessing, that particular relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that Christ died for our sins. We have believed in it. We have trusted in it. It is the gospel. Do we only have that complete fellowship inside the city of New Jerusalem, being before God and the Lord Jesus Christ day and night? We will be forever in eternity where only one man in Israel could go once a year. Twice, one for his sins, then for the sins of the nation. No other Jew, no other Israelite, no other Gentile ever saw what was behind the first curtain in the holy place. And no one ever saw but one what was behind the curtain into the most holy place. And we will be there. We will be there with the ark. We will be there with God. We'll be there with the cherubim. All four of them. Not just the two. And it was dark in that room, except for the light of God, we can only imagine. But it will be light in New Jerusalem. As God will be seated, he'll be clothed, he'll be reigning, he'll be girded about with all in all. No more sin, no more Satan, no one ever rejecting what God has done. No, nobody rebelling against God ever again. And that's what eternity is. That was even before the old eternity. Because what happened in the old eternity, one of the cherubim, Lucifer, fell. And he called some of the angels and fell with him. And, and sin and wickedness and pride came into be. That is not going to happen in the eternal to happen. Satan will be put down. Satan and his angels will be put into the lake of fire. Satan and the angels and the men that want Satan, that did not want God, are put off in the lake of fire forever, being tormented in a flame. As those that wanted God and believed in God will be with him. And then glory for the king of all kings and the lord of all lords. And the God of all gods. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more money. No more houses. No more automobiles. No more junk. Everything will be for God. Everything will be for the Lord Jesus Christ. You will never have to think again what you said. Everything you say will be right before the king. Before God the majesty. You'll never have a wicked anything. You'll never have a sinful anything. Everything you do at this point when God is reigning, God is majesty, God is all in all, will be right. Everything in us will be holy. There will be no more need of Ten Commandments. Can you imagine walking up to the Ten Commandments if God does have those, those uh, uh, tablets? You walk up to him, you look at him like a dumb dog. Hey, uh, Moses, come here. Yeah. What's adultery? I don't know. I don't remember. What is coveting? Well, since we don't have a television set up here no more or radio, I have no idea. Lord Jesus was coveting. Let's don't worry about that. Let's just talk about the new things. And then the Bible will be real. At that point in eternity, do you know 100% of the population that hasn't even been born yet? Never mind from Adam to today. 100% of the population of eternity will believe the King James 1611 Bible. I said it. Some of you just had puckered up just like you were having lemons and, and pickles. Everyone in eternity will be a Bible believer. Even Satan himself has been quoted to quote the scriptures. And quoted them right. May I remind you. You ever know if Satan quoted from the King James Bible? 
You don't ever hear him quoting from a modern version. Well, my modern, yeah, yeah, modern version is garbage. But all of all will be God one day. Without sin will we be before him. Holy before God, the holy. God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. One day we will be holy. And one day we'll be before God and God. Listen, all the troubles and problems we've been reading from the 92nd Psalm of Genesis to Psalms 92. What's it going to matter, all the problems? What's it going to matter that David had an affair with Bathsheba and killed the man in glory? What's it going to matter? Brethren, I'm going to say something, and this is Bible. You can reject me, but you're the wrong. If you, as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, and when you are judged at the judgment seat of Christ, and you have no rewards, you have earned no crowns, you will be in eternity bald. Those who do right, if you earn one crown, and I've taught before, you can win one crown, which gets two crowns, which gets three crowns, which gets four crowns. One crown is for pastors and evangelists and missionaries. You will spend eternity, and I, there's no envy in heaven, I don't understand it, but you will be in eternity in heaven before Jesus Christ, before God the Father, in New Jerusalem, not wearing a crown. Because you chose for all the world. You chose to go back to Thessalonica like Demas. You chose to serve the world and self rather than God. And that is the only difference that will be in eternity that you could have won, you could have earned, and you did not. And you're standing before that holy, righteous, majestic, strength, and holy God with no reward. There are two things you can take to glory with you. Two things. And only two things. One is lost souls that get saved. Under you planning or you watering. Any soul that gets saved by, by what you what you helped and what you did will go to heaven and you'll be accounted to it. Number two, everything you've done for Jesus Christ will earn rewards. Everything you've done for Jesus Christ will go into eternity. Everything else will not. You help a fellow Christian with whatever in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that goes on eternity. That goes to a that goes to a crown. Everything you've done for self will burn up. Eternal. One day will be for that eternal God. Then you're talking about perfect. That is perfection. Unless you reject God, you rebel against God, you think you can do it by religion, you can think you do it by works, you think you can do it by whatever, or you just went outright, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God, your perfection will be turned into damnation. Your perfection will be turned into you will pay for your own sins in hell in the lake of fire, burning. Death and hell will be cast in the lake of fire. This is the condemnation that men love darkness rather than light, for their deeds are wicked or evil. I'm not sure what, if it says evil or wicked, so I'll quote both of them, but I don't want to be wrong. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder 
consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, Sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee.